Gentlemen, the Tory party, unless it is a national party, is nothing. It is not a confederacy of nobles. It is not a democratic multitude. It is a party formed from all the numerous classes in the realm. Classes alike and equal before the law, but whose different conditions and different aims give vigor and variety to our national life. I have always been of the opinion that the Tory party has three great objects. The first is to maintain the institutions of the country, not from any sentiment of political superstition, but because we believe that they embody the principles upon which a community like England can alone safely rest. The principles of liberty, of order, of law and of religion ought not to be entrusted to individual opinion or to the caprice and passion of multitudes, but should be embodied in a form of permanence and power. We associate with the monarchy the ideas which it represents. The majesty of law, the administration of justice, the fountain of mercy and of honor. We know that in the estates of the realm and the privileges they enjoy is the best security for public liberty and good government. We believe that a national profession of faith can only be maintained by an established church. Every one of these institutions has been attacked and assailed, in my opinion, and in the opinion of wiser men than myself. The liberty of England depends much upon the landed tenure of England upon the fact that there is a class which can alike defy despots and mobs around which the people may always rally and which must be patriotic from its intimate connection with the soil. Now, let me say a word about the other estate of the realm, which was first attacked by liberalism. One of the most distinguishing features of the great change effected in 1832 was that those who brought it about at once abolished all the franchises of the working classes. The discontent upon the subject of representation, which has from that time more or less pervaded our society, dates back from that period, and that discontent has now ceased. It was terminated by the Act of Parliamentary Reform of 1867. That act was founded on a confidence that the great body of people of this country were conservative. By that I mean that the people of England and especially the working classes, are proud of belonging to a great country and wish to maintain its greatness, attributed to the ancient institutions of the land. The second great object is to uphold the empire of England. If you look at the history of this country since the arrival of liberalism 40 years ago, you will find that there has been no effort so continuous, so subtle as the attempts of liberalism to bring about the disintegration of the empire. Gentlemen, another great object of the Tory party is the improvement of the condition of the people. The health of the people is the most important question for a statesman. It involves the state of the dwellings of the people, the regulation of their industry, the inspection of their toil. A leading member denounced these policies as a policy of sewage but to one of the laboring multitude of England. It is not a policy of sewage, but a question of life and death. And moreover, the palace is unsafe if the cottage is unhappy.